Zaren Lobo, who is a member of the electric car community in India. He, at one point of time, used to own nine electric cars. And uh, Zaren is a, a very important part of the electric car community. Uh, Zaren's company also services old electric cars, like the Reva electric car, the E2 electric car, and more. So I thought in this podcast, it, we will talk about uh, this aspect of servicing that Zaril is doing. Uh, we'll also talk about his company. And we'll also talk about the current state of Mahindra Electric and their new XUV 400 electric car. And we'll talk about Tata Motors, of course, and then the future. So uh, I thought this, is, this uh, podcast will be useful to the community because uh, Zaril has a wealth of experience with electric cars and uh, servicing electric cars. And I think many, many owners of electric cars would appreciate uh, his insights. So thanks, Daryl, for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, Kamlesh. It's an honor to be on one of your uh, podcasts. Uh, actually, uh, Extra Reinforced Plastics was uh, started in 1966, and I took over in uh, 1980. Uh, ever since, uh, we've been running the company. Uh, we were first in chemical equipment from 1981-82, uh, right up to about 2000, uh, when uh, we got some offers for uh, doing custom golf car body kits for basically the American market, which also introduced us to the electric uh, community itself. About the same time in 2001, uh, as you know, Mr. Maini, Chetan Maini, started uh, the Reva, production of the Reva. The Reva has been sold from uh, 2001, 2000, 2006, 2007, when it had a DC motor. And from 2006, 2007 to 2012, approximately, it went in with an AC motor. Uh, as we all know that uh, Chetan Mining sold uh, Mining itself uh, to Mahendras in about 2010. And we carried on with, uh, uh, with the joint venture between Mining and Mahendras up to about to March 2016. But Mahendras had taken a decision at that time to totally uh, abandon the Reva as they were selling the E2, which they started in about 2013 and went up to about 2018 with different models. Uh, as Kamlesh earlier in uh, the beginning of the podcast said that we had a whole lot of uh, Revas. We absolutely rubbed the Reva. And uh, Initially, we were, though we were uh, doing golf cars, which is similar to the Reva, uh, we used to give our uh, Revas to the service center to, save, to service. It was in about 2015 and 16 that we started having problems with the Revas and uh, got stuck with parts. At which time we decided that uh, it's too good a car to uh, be abandoned because of lack of spare parts and we started looking out for spare parts ourselves. We also, having had a good relationship with the mining company, uh, found out, you know, who their suppliers were and started uh, ordering original spare parts. Uh, today in the Reva community, just the Reva community, we have about uh, 174 uh, members, which means that uh, we have at some point of time service their cars and ensure that their cars are on the road. Uh, we've taken some really bad abandoned cars and uh, put them back on the road. Why did we do that? Because we, we felt that the Reva was an optimum size for the Indian market itself. I personally drive the, the Reva. I drove the Reva this morning and this evening going to work and coming back. And I still get uh, waves from children and people at signals for it. So so fantastic, Zaril. So that's uh, definitely the Reva was a pioneer. And uh, 
I mean, uh, it was a made in India car. So the specialty about the Reva was that uh, most of the electronic components uh, inside that car uh, were sourced from Indian vendors. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. Only the the main controller came from Curtis America because they were leaders and are leaders in uh, in uh, motor controllers, uh, which was a very very wise decision. You hardly ever hear of a controller giving trouble. Everything else is uh, made in India. And I think that's something to be very, very proud of. Uh, also, if you look at uh, 2000 and 2012, you will find, and then 2023 today, you will still find that uh, some of the systems in the, in the Reba are absolutely unique and very, very modern. It's not as though it's some or or outdated arcade uh, you know uh, car that's running uh, it's very very modern in a lot of things and uh, i would say a lot of the uh, the newer cars have been built around uh, the reva itself right so uh, so i mean what are the com- main major electronic components uh, that was inside the reva for example you have you're saying that the controller was imported but the other components like the onboard charger uh, like the motor the battery pack BMS, everything had Indian windows. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Mining was able to get hold of Excite Industries to uh, actually uh, uh, develop or copy uh, the Trojan battery, which was the American battery. I think within six to eight months of the uh, the Reba coming on the road, they were using Indian Excite batteries, which are still available up to today. That's how we can keep these cars on the road. They're absolutely uh, fantastic. Minimum life that one can expect from them is five to seven years. And we have people who have... These are lead-acid batteries. These are lead-acid batteries made by Exide Industries. Hmm. And uh, we've had some people actually look after their cars and have the batteries for 10 years. Uh, Quite a few, not just an isolated case. Then wow. from there, they have a very unique system, which is what has actually kept the batteries alive. It's called the energy management system, which is connected to all the eight batteries. Uh, it's got its own sensors on the batteries itself for water level, and uh, which is very unique, actually. And uh, the temperature wow. control of the batteries itself. So your batteries never get, uh, you know, overheated uh, during charging or during running because one has to understand these are traction batteries and uh, sometimes up to 160, 168 amps are drawn from the battery, which can uh, make the battery quite hot. Uh, So that uh, heat needs to be dissipated. There are fans to dissipate that heat and uh, so it's well looked after. The batteries have a very unique central watering system. Uh, which many people feel is a, a disadvantage of lead acid batteries using lead acid batteries. But this has to be, uh, you know, only hydrated once a week or once a fortnight, depending on what you use. Uh, from that, actually, one comes to the controller, which you said was, uh, which we agreed was a Curtis controller, which is uh, made abroad. Uh, there's a very, very unique. Uh, 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 DC uh, uh, charger for charging the batteries from the main. And that DC charger has a, a, a DC DC controller which converts the 48 volts straight to the uh, 12 volts to run all the lighting and the studio system and things like that. Uh, so uh, that charger, uh, the onboard charger, again, is a very, was a very, very new innovation in, let's say, the 1900s and the, and the 2000s, right? Uh, the rest of the components are small components, all Indian components, uh, relays and things like that. Uh, so um, also at that point of time, a uh, lot of the, 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 the mechanical parts and some of the electrical parts were kind of um, got from the Maruti and, and cars like that, which were available at that stage. So when, uh, one is that we get those parts. The second is that they're easily available and uh, not at a great cost. So keeping a car alive itself is, is quite easy. Um, right. For example, if uh, 
uh, if i on board charger uh, conks off so uh, i am currently no. car companies are charging exorbitant rates uh, for these components but uh, i think maintaining a reva was more easier you're saying more affordable uh, well it's like this uh, sometimes uh uh due to the power fluctuations uh by the desk comes in in various uh, states mm. uh i think uh, you know there are uh, uh, the infrastructure or the number of apartments and things like that that are coming where there was single dwelling uh has increased resulting in the transfers uh, transformers being overloaded and uh so you get surges in in the power uh which uh, sometimes uh, burn the charger uh now uh, uh, fortunately we in bangalore have got mines to assist us uh and help us with the refurbishing of uh, the old charger which is done at a fraction of the cost of a new charger uh, it doesn't become a a major uh, uh expense to the owners uh and uh, you know like uh some of the 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 charges being charged by oems are ridiculous uh you know uh, I, I they may have their overheads they may have everything else uh but uh, some of the charges that they are, uh, that they are charging are ridiculous and uh, as I, as we agreed earlier that being a, a made in india product it is easily serviceable and put back again on on a car yeah. in 2023 there are many reva owners all over india uh are you still uh, is your company are you still servicing them uh, if yes uh, how how are you sourcing these parts right so the reva uh, has electronic parts mechanical parts now are these parts available is there danger that these parts uh, will soon not be available so i'm talking about the reva not the eto so uh, so the, if reva owners are listening i think they would like to know so your insights on the eco- ecosystem on the reva uh mechanical parts we have kind of sourced almost every single uh, uh uh mechanical part except for the shock absorbers which we had in 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 conversation uh with the shock absorber manufacturer unfortunately the uh the automobile industry uh works on big numbers and uh the shock absorber being a big cost uh you know for us to keep that number of uh of shock absorbers uh is is difficult as far as the you know i i i want to stress again that uh and and i'm not being paid by chase on my like that be very very clear uh it, 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 the parts that is used okay uh, are so robust absolutely robust parts other than the charger which is not his fault okay the rest of the parts have lasted uh, and if by chance uh, if at all they do go we have already sourced the manufacturer and talk to the manufacturer and uh, be getting the parts from the manufacturers themselves new parts so the rail is going to stay on the road longer than one thinks it's going to be uh, as i said you know we've got 174 uh, friends customers whatever you want to call them uh, uh, and these are the stay cars there are the cars are, are on the road 100% on the road uh they've uh, if the batteries have gone we've got new batteries for them and uh you know it, it it's just going to keep going uh, so uh, the rever uh, the rever is going to outlive any of the ic cars that's for definite uh, you bring a 2020 uh uh, uh, uh 2000 uh maruti uh santro wagonar whatever you want wow. and the rever still going to be around and the, and those are going to go off the road that's for definite and uh you know the of the 174 cars that we are servicing there must be at least another 200 cars running on the road in bangalore because uh, you know we have a small sticker on the back plus we are easily able to make out and uh, you know we see the car and we feel proud right irrespective of where it's come to us not come to us we are we are proud to see that the reva is still running you know perfectly in fact uh, 
uh, we have a couple of ladies, okay? Now, nothing meant by when I use ladies. Okay? We have some of them who are so comfortable with the, with the rebar. Uh, you know, sometimes you get scared that, uh, you know, people are using scooters badly. But these mm-hmm. ladies are using the, the rebar as badly. They're zipping in and out of traffic. Mm-hmm. And they're enjoying themselves. Uh, they, they feel absolutely independent because they've got the small car. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's fantastic. That's the car that needs to come back. If somebody is listening, mm. God damn it, you know, let's, let's get that, that size of car back again. Call it a rave call it whatever you want. Yeah. But let's get that car back. Uh, most families, uh, uh, young families need mm. a car that size. Yeah. Uh, it's, right. it, 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 it. If you see the, there is actually a movement happening, uh, of course, not from big OEMs because big OEMs don't care. If you look at, there are some certain startups uh, who are actually getting micro cars into the market. Uh, if, in Auto Expo, we saw one company and then we saw another company called PMV. We actually spoke to the founder. So he's launching a four-door micro car. Uh, and uh, other, uh, there's another company who's put, who's going to put a solar panel on top. But ultimately, these are startups and they need funding. So it's all in the question. Uh, it, it's all a big question mark right now. So uh, if they'll ever get into production. But the idea is there, of course, from uh, the startups who see that the OEMs are not doing anything in the space. In China, there's a very famous uh, small car called Wuling. Uh, and it's very successful. It's it's, uh, the, it's a top-selling car, electric car in China. And it's an extremely affordable car. What this tells me is that the Chinese car companies are basically working for the common man, where the Indian car companies are basically essentially don't care. That's how it is, unfortunately. I totally, totally agree with you. I totally agree <laughs> with you. Uh, there, 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 there is absolutely no doubt. Uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, as I say, you know, we we export uh, uh, custom car, uh, golf car, uh, body kits to America. Mm-hmm. And so we have dealers all over the states. Uh, often enough, you know, somebody turns around and tells me, oh, you know, I, I, I've ordered an electric car in a box. Uh, and uh, of course, initially, I never understood what he, what he was saying. <laughs> and uh, the, the Chinese actually box their car up, right, uh, into a box. And uh, the only thing that they will not do is they will not clear customs and they will not deliver the car to you. You have to go to the nearest port, which you tell them, hmm. and uh, go and pick up your box. And uh, naturally, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my dealers are, are golf car dealers, so they're very excited to get a little new toy. But it's amazing. It's amazing. This is the same type of car that you're talking about. The batteries hmm. are set in. Everything is set in. You know, there's nothing you do. You break the sides of the box and you drive, almost drive the car out from that box. It's small. Yes, mm-hmm. it may be, uh, you know, about the size of the Rebo, a little bigger than the Rebo. They come in different shapes and sizes. And uh, they cost a farthing, yeah, literally a farthing. There, there's nothing. There's nothing. Uh, now, how do the Chinese do it? I really don't know. It may be because of numbers, because they keep on sharing components among each other. And uh, they, they make a beautiful vehicle. Uh, actually, a couple of my dealers have now bought these cars. And they're, they're having a ball. They're having a ball. Yes, they are not highway certified. But in the, in the, uh, in the communities, you know, all the gated communities and things like that, they're busy taking them around for a spin and enjoying them. And for the price, they say, yeah, forget it. It lasts a year or two, two, three, four years. And then we'll see. We'll see about it at that time. Right? And nobody has complained yet. I often ask them about the, the, their little cars. And nobody has complained about anything on the car. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I don't see why. Uh, thing. Um, in fact, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it out loud. We already have a car on the, on the platform. Uh, it's a physical car. But uh, funding, funding, funding. That's yes. the biggest problem. Yes. Okay. You see, that's my biggest problem today. If somebody is willing to, <laughs> to 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 join up, uh, I'm I'm all open to listening to somebody. And uh, we have the car standing. 
Uh, it it was it was running a while back. We taken out a couple of components to to check out uh, the life test. But we uh, unlike uh, a lot of startups and things like that mm. uh, that keep on talking to you only with a computer. Mm. Uh, we have the physical car actually standing in the factory with, with Indian vendors for components. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay. Except for that controller again. Of course. Uh, yeah. The 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 controller is the Curtis controller, which is used worldwide. So we we kept that. Other than that, yes. Uh, wow. And that is one of the reasons why, because we are still talking to the same vendors. The drive I used, you see, right. and uh, in a way, uh, we kind of cajoled them, some of them, to work with us, uh, because as you know, the automobile industry only wants numbers. They don't really uh, care for anybody who doesn't have the numbers. But a lot of them have worked with us and are working with us. So yeah. Have you reached out to Chetan Maini? Is he interested to get back to cars? He, 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 what is he doing he, with the Chetan, battery companies? I think you should get back to cars. <laughs> I too think he needs to get back to cars. I mean, he's got the whole setup. He's got the setup yeah. uh, because uh, mining material movement is older than the Reva itself. Wow. And uh, the mining family itself and the businesses are much, much older than the Reva. Uh, right? That's mm-hmm. number one. But I think there are some contracts with uh, Mahindra uh, which uh, permit... Uh, don't permit him to actually come in with a vehicle. Uh, oh my but, God! Really? Uh, but uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm. I, don't quote me, but I. I think so. Uh, wow. I, 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 on the other hand, uh, Chetan has never sat down quietly. Yeah. Chetan has been working with huge automobile companies, Ashok Leyland and uh, Piago and and things like that. And uh, as you may have read some time ago. Uh, he is uh, now uh, in. He has been actually for the last two years into battery swapping. Uh, he's got some swapping stations in Chandigarh and Delhi and uh, yeah. and yeah, Sun Mobility and yeah. in in Sri Lanka also. You know, yeah. so uh, he's very much into into battery swapping itself. And now, I think uh, bounce or not bounce. One, one of these uh, delivery companies uh, have uh, is tied up with them right? for all their uh, battery swapping needs. So uh, Chetan is not out of the market at all. Interesting. Chetan is very much there. Uh, so now if any Reva owner or any anywhere in India, if they have issues, they can get in touch with you, right? I will I will leave the details in the description below uh, so people can contact uh Zaril, so how does that work? Like if someone is in Delhi, can they get service from you? Uh, has there been some cases? Can you talk about some a couple of cases? Actually, we have uh, have uh, done up uh, uh, a river for actually uh, one owner in Delhi. Okay. Uh, he sent it all the way to Bangalore. We refurbished the whole car and sent it back to him. Uh, we've had... Uh, uh, Abe Matur, who bought a, a, a Reva uh, for his father, who lives in Ajmer. Uh, so, uh, Suresh Matur uh, is now looking, uh, who was the principal of Mayo College in Ajmer, now lives over there with his wife. And uh, the two of them ha- are using uh, the Reva. Uh, Dr. Doshi from uh, Ahmedabad sent his Rema all the way from Ahmedabad to Bangalore. We refurbished and sent it back. Wow. Uh, Mr. Lakshmi Prasad from Hyderabad uh, sent his 2001 Rema wow. uh, to, to, to Bangalore. And we just mm-hmm. sent that back some maybe a month ago. Wow. Uh, so there are a lot of cars actually all over that have come down to Bangalore and uh, gone back. There are a lot of people. Uh, there is Anil uh, Mehta from Indoor. There is mm-hmm. Parag Jain from Barkpur in Madhya Pradesh, both in Madhya Pradesh, uh, you know, who have bought uh, Ravers in Bangalore. We mm-hmm. refurbished them and sent them completely uh, back, and they're enjoying it. They're unique. And uh, everybody around, including the RTOs uh, in, in Barkpur and Indoor, are amazed at the car when it goes for re-registration. 
so yes, uh, I yeah. mean we get inquiries from all over the country for waivers, and uh, wherever possible, yeah, we think. In fact, we have one car in Assam, which was taken from Bangalore uh, before we uh, knew. Uh, we've sent all the parts to them uh, to keep their cars running. Wow. As you may know that uh, there is a, a club in Europe. For the, uh, the Raver was called the Jeebus in, in, uh, the in Europe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in Europe, basically, right? UK and, and the rest of Europe. Uh-huh. So we do send uh, people parts from Bangalore uh, to enable them to keep their cars running. Yeah. Wow, fascinating. Even Greece, we've sent the control all the way, <laughs> way to Greece. Yeah. That's so, amazing. That, yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Is. Yeah, so uh, uh, no, so ha- ha- have there been any cases of uh, Reva owners wanting to uh, convert from lead acid to lithium ion? Uh, have you done such conversions, battery conversions? Um, I was kind of lucky uh, to have uh, a Reva which was actually for export. As I said, you know, uh, Miney's uh, towards the end actually made about 20 cars which they uh, exported, uh, were exporting Mm. again to Europe. And uh, they were uh, uh, lithium ion cars, but they were fully built lithium meant for lithium ion. And you would call them actually the trial version of the ETO because a lot of the system, not a lot, most of the systems were the same in the E2 and uh, this Reva, the Lithium Iron Reva. I'm lucky to have one of those cars with me. Uh, so, um, because not all of them got exported. And so that actually is a 2014 model uh, car uh, registered. And uh, yeah, uh, we have that. Uh, now, your question was actually, have we converted uh, mm. Revas to Lithium Iron? Uh, we have one actually in the factory today. Do we encourage it? No. Okay. We do not encourage anybody to convert their cars uh, okay. from lead acid to, to lithium. One is that uh, anybody who has actually owned the uh, ETO will know that the life of the, or the unreliability of the, the lithium ion batteries in EVs, uh, hmm. basically the ETO has been very high. Uh, that is because of the way that the cells uh, go out of balance, basically. We've mm-hmm. overcome that in the last uh, last four months. Mm. We'll talk but, about that uh, later. Yeah, yeah we'll talk yeah. about that later. Yeah. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't really uh, encourage people unless they kind of, you know, pester us. The, the reason is that the lead acid batteries are uh, 248 kgs, 249 kgs. Okay, and uh, lithium ion batteries are only 100 kgs. Uh, the suspension is not designed for it. Okay, so we've got to do an extensive amount of work to uh, change the whole suspension and handling of the car. Let's see. That's number one. Number two is that the instrument cluster doesn't, uh, the SOC meter does not work with lithium ion because it's made for the uh, EMS and the lead acid batteries. Right. So you're going to have another ex- extra meter, which is nothing like uh, the normal uh, energy meter that you would have in any car. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, it becomes a little difficult mm-hmm. for a lay person to understand exactly what is the range, how much uh, energy he's got left in the batteries and things like that. Right. So uh, we do do them. They're more expensive, but uh, we don't encourage them. We don't encourage them. Yeah, and you're saying that many uh, Reva owners are uh, using the lead acid batteries for more than five years. So it doesn't make sense spending more money on lithium ion cells and uh, rather get a lead acid battery, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You see, the, uh, what happens is uh, it's, it's all very new. I mean, maybe 10 years old, but it's still all very new. It's not tried and tested. Right, and uh, uh, nobody knows the reliability of the lithium ion batteries really in EVs. Mm. Also, again, uh, it's an emerging technology. I mean, you say, oh, 10 years. Every day it's emerging. <laughs> right? right, It's changing on a daily basis. So uh, a be- better technology, better batteries, 
everything. Uh, but uh, again, you know, those better batteries and all are not available for uh, for re refitting in a Reva. Uh, you're still getting older older type of batteries, old used batteries, which are this thing. And then, unfortunately, we get Chinese batteries, which may not be a, a quality batteries. You see, uh, and and as most people know, the biggest. Uh, 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 downfall of uh, of lithium ion batteries is that they've got to be balanced, right? right? So it is, it is the bad boy in the in the whole balancing that actually screws up the uh, the running of the car. Exactly. The car suddenly stops suddenly stops on the road. Uh, whereas the lead acid battery kind of gives you a fair warning. The meter starts dancing left and right, left and right. You know, saying I'm dying, I'm dying. Whereas the lithium ion battery just dies on the road, and you're pushing the car all alone because nobody else comes to help you. <laughs> no one yep. pushes the car. So, right? We tow it. No, you got to push it off the road. Of course, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, they, 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 as I say, the car doesn't tell you I'm dying. Take me to the side of the road. <laughs> And, uh, and, yeah, and yeah, I have experienced that, and it's not fun. Yeah. I mean, we all after, have, yeah. yeah, all of you, yeah, all of us. After after the sixth year, fifth year, my cell, one cell got weak, and then it'll just stall without any warning. It's like a nightmarish thing situation. Yeah, actually, that's the word, nightmarish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so great. So okay, great. So that's about the Reva. So just one quick thing about the Reva, like when uh, Mahindra took over. Uh, from Reva, from the Reva Electric Car Company back in 2013, did did you get service? Were the Mahindra dealers servicing Reva, uh, and and uh, when did they stop? And now, of course, you can't take a Reva to a Mahindra dealer, right? They're clueless. It's not that they're clueless. They don't. They say they don't have the parts. They don't have this and that and the rest of it. Uh, I, I I will never understand that. That part of it, I will never understand. How, how a company which spends money, hmm. I'm not going to uh, quantify the money, spends money setting up a service center, then turns around and says, oh, I can't service your car. That is, uh, that's unbelievable. That's kind of unbelievable. Well, in yes. a way, or, on, a, on a lighter note, thank you, Mahindra. I'm doing it now. <laughs> that's true uh, <laughs> exactly Zaril is in the uh, extra reinforced plastic is doing it Zaril is doing, his team is doing it so yeah who needs Mahindra anyway but uh, it would have been great if you know if, if Mahindra would have at least put in some effort you know to educate the dealers to keep the ecosystem going like such a beautiful ecosystem was built to for all these Indian components electronic components and uh, you're keeping it alive Zaril but if Mahindra would have kept it alive it would have been great right so that's a sad absolutely, part. absolutely, absolutely. There is no question about it. Yeah, there mm. have been so many happier people on the road. Yeah, so mm. many. So anyway, anyway, so let's move on to the E two O now. Uh, we have more E two O E two O owners uh, in the community, uh, and now uh, it's now twenty twenty three. The E two O was launched in twenty thirteen, and uh, what an amazing car, and what a sad end to it. The progress from the Reva was to the E2, and the E2 came with lithium ion batteries. Uh, when that came with lithium ion batteries, you needed a BMS uh, to control the uh, the battery uh, charging and things like that. Correct. But uh, 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 but uh, uh, minis. Now you see here's the here's the the fallacy. Uh, uh, Mindless had nothing to do with the development of the, the E2. The yeah. development of the E2 started in 2009 and went on to the production car came in 2012-2013. I think they did a fabulous job. A fabulous job. Uh, let's start at, you know, just the entry of the car. The entry of the car is uh, with a fob, uh, which is nothing but a remote control which has a chip which uh, when authenticated with the uh, uh, with the push button switch uh, actually authenticates the car to start uh, that when that starts it also triggers the IEMS which is the uh, intelligent management system uh, energy management system okay uh, now why I'm stressing on that is because 
uh, one has to still look at 2010 as a as a yardstick that these things were actually uh, developed and integrated in 2010 no matter when the car actually came into production uh, and minders had really nothing to do with it they may have, they just bought the company now uh, what what also happens is that triggers the whole car in uh, to come alive the controller is almost exactly the same as in the Rema. A Curtis controller in the Rema is 350 amps. In the E2, it's 450 amps. The motor is, we messed this out. The motor in the Rema is a kiloska motor, 12.9 uh, kilowatts. And in an E2, it's 19 kilowatts. Uh, so again, made in India, kiloska. Uh, and this is an AC induction motor, right? AC induction motor, yes. Okay. Fantastic. Um, uh, so the, the IEMS uh, has basically two modes. Uh, one mode was, I believe, made in Bangalore. The other mode was made in Google. And they came and Miney integrated them into uh, a single module. And uh, the whole uh, whole car is, uh, is managed by the IEMS and the IEMS has a, a CAD a CAM uh, port uh, into a, a specialized program which looks after the, the the whole running of the car itself. You can diagnose everything from the uh, the port itself. So the, uh, uh, my my point is that mm. uh, 2010 when Miney actually uh, made the car, it was ultra modern, right? Exactly. Uh, uh, today, uh, today, uh, let's say ten years down the line, or yes, ten years, irrespective of whether you look at 2012 or you look at 2013, it's still ten years, right? Uh, Minders, I mean, if I'm allowed to say that, Minders took this uh, thing in 2010, and they, uh, um, as per contract, uh, Chetan uh, Mini left uh, Minders. Uh, this thing in 2016. Hmm. Uh, the same, the same chassis, the same, and the photo came. Some some parts of the photo have failed uh, uh, very very badly. That's the the P6 and P8. Some people may disagree with me, but uh, I think. And, no, no, no. Uh, there are a lot of lots, lots of examples of uh, P6 and P8s failing. So, uh, Mainza took ha, took a very reliable E2O and then created a fold door which was uh, not well received at all by the community. I totally agree with you. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, and right now, many E2O owners are really worried because Mainza might pull the plug on the E2O too, right? And it's already happening, right? I think so. Mm. I think so. I, I I have experienced it. Uh, as I say, we we first try to go to the the dealers themselves, the service center, not the dealers, the service centers, and uh, you know we try to get the the parts uh, over there. But uh, I think uh, ninety percent, and I would be wrong in saying ninety percent of the time, mm. uh, we can't get the parts, and uh, that's the end of the day. You know, so what is one doing now? One is looking for cars that have actually, uh, we, as I said, for the Reva, a lot of the parts are still the same for the Eto. So we have parts, uh, but those are all underbody suspension kind of parts, except the suspension itself, the shock absorbers, mm. uh, brakes, and and things like that we've got. So we keeping that alive. A lot of electrical items are common with the Reva, uh, so we we right. we have so access I... to that. I think we had a discussion on this. I just want to enumerate for people who don't know. Like, for example, the onboard charger, DC DC converter on the E2O uh, were made by Mining Industries, right? That's right. That's and the, right. the motor, which is Kilos Kilosco motor, was used in the Reva, is used in the E2O too, right? In the Indian motor. Yes. 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 Uh, the motor controller is, again, Curtis, which is, has an office in Pune. So, again, India, almost procured from India. It's an American company. That's right. Uh, that's and right. then you have the IEMS system, uh, Inter Intelligent Energy Management System, which is used in the E2O. Uh, that is, again, an uh, Indian component and assembled in mining, right? That's right. That's right. You have all these components in the E2O. And right now, uh, the, the the fear from the E2O owners is that now with these components conk off, what do, you, what do you think? I mean, is it possible to keep these components going for E2O owners? 
Well, here's how how we uh, you know uh, as Indians we don't allow anything to die. Exactly. I I I'm mean, I'm very clear about that. Uh, you know we we have uh, while uh, you know again as Indians we turn around and say jugad hai, jugad. Hai. It's not jugad. It is innovation. I think because of our lack of ability to get things, we innovate. We innovate to keep things going. Yeah. And uh, I would not say that, uh, you know, uh, we are trying to make any components because we're not capable of doing that. Uh, these are uh, industries of their own. But what happens is that, uh, one of the, as you know, one of the major components that has been uh, failing in, uh, in ETOs are the batteries themselves. Uh, and uh, the batteries are not easily available. And if they're available, they're secondhand batteries, which is not a problem. Uh, the, the, the main thing is the cost of the lithium ion battery. Uh, today, Minder quotes, uh, I think, five and a half lakhs uh, plus GST or five and a half lakhs with GST, which nobody can really afford to have to change a whole battery pack in the car. Uh, so again, these are uh, uh, while... Winston Thunder Sky cells, right? So if Minder replaces the battery, they'll get the Winston Thunder Sky uh, LFP cells. From abroad, and they'll assemble it in your in your car. They are they are not getting them. Oh really? They are not getting them. So what? I sense... mean, I know a car that's I I I know uh, 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 a car which is lying in the workshop for over six months with the guy having paid in advance, and uh, hmm. he's waiting for the batteries. So. Oh my God! Really? So people are actually willing to yeah. pay five lakhs for the. Into a battery pack, that's crazy. I mean, the odd man <laughs> is, there is no doubt about it. Uh, and of course, he regrets it because he's paid the advance, he's stuck. God. Uh, today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow. No, but I feel Mahindra is definitely inflating the price of the battery pack. The, the dealers are looking to make money here. Uh, it is definitely not 5 lakhs, right? That if you look at the cell of the LF, uh, the Vincent cell, if you procure it from AliExpress or whatever, it is cheaper, right? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> but for an individual to to import uh, becomes very difficult. Correct. Fitting no, in the you car. Can, uh, yeah, no, fitting in the car is is no rocket science. Uh, the the un, the unfortunate part is that uh, uh, there is no stable uh, policy per se. Uh, the, everybody sh uh, shouting. No to China, no to China, no to China. But there are container loads of uh, two wheelers and three wheelers which are coming in every day, right. every day. Uh, you know, we can see it. I mean, you go go to any any place in India, and including Bangalore, and you will be amazed at the number of Chinese uh, vehicles available. <laughs> uh, since we are not talking two wheelers, I won't enter that space either. But uh, what I'm saying is that if I try to import batteries from uh, from China, I, I mean, one is it's a dangerous commodity. Second is it's very, very difficult to pass through customs and uh, right. and all the other procedures that take place. Mm. So I think, uh, of course, as you know, that uh, uh, Mahindra's, uh, uh, by about 2017, 16, 17, uh, change from Thunder Sky batteries to the Calbi batteries. Uh, and so they're still using those Calbi batteries in the in the trio uh, three wheeler. Right. Uh, so yeah, so there, there are batteries and I, I think you know one can keep the ETO alive for some time. Okay, for those who don't know the uh, Calb is C A L B. Uh, these cells are slightly lesser weight compared to the Thunder Sky cells. And the energy density is much higher. Higher, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, so basically, I mean, if you can't get the Vincent Tata Sky cells, you can at least get the cab cells and somehow extend the life of your uh, E2O. If, if an E2O owner wants to forget about Mahindra, they don't care about Mahindra, they want to do it from you. You do it, right? Absolutely. I do. I do. Okay. I, I, on any given, every, every, any given day, hmm. six days a week, we have cars coming for that. Okay. So what, what do you do? You, you procure cells, cab cells? Is that uh, no, 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 no? We still uh, uh, no. We've only done one of those uh, with Cal, Calbi, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the rest of them are Thunder Sky. As I said, uh, you know, we're procuring 
them from uh, cars which are uh, um, some some may be accident damaged cars or whatever wow. and some may be cars that have run off the road uh, for whatever reason mm-hmm. uh, there are 16 cells and not all 16 die at the same time uh, we have changed uh, we've changed actually full packs also uh, again with uh, with older cells and uh, we're keeping those cars alive uh, if it was a 120 kilometer car, we had managed to get them to at least 80 kilometers safe without anxiety. Uh, now you say without anxiety, yes, we have uh, been working with a company in China mm-hmm. on uh, on uh, uh, the active uh, cell balancers, uh, which was which is uh, not such an old technology, and so it was not incorporated in the eco. Uh, if it had, we would have the cars uh, much more dependable. Right. But as you said, your car also stopped on the road. Uh, we are now putting these into uh, into whatever cars come to us. We've done about uh, 24 in Bangalore. We've done uh, in one car that has gone to Dehradun, you know, Somia, Somia's yeah. car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, we've done one in Hyderabad uh, itself. And uh, Three, uh, two have already been fitted in Delhi. Uh, Suresh's car is one of them. And uh, uh, yesterday, last night, there was one more fitted in Delhi. And there is one that will be done over the weekend. So, yeah. So, how does uh, this work, uh, Zaril, this active balancer? If you can explain. So, uh, yeah. So, what happens with the active balancer, as we said, you know, there are 16, uh, 16 cells. Uh, it, it determines the highest cell and the lowest cell. And it keeps on picking up uh, 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 voltage, uh, more amperage from that uh, from that cell, mm. uh, the higher cell, and taking it to the lower cell and putting it in. This is all capacitor uh, controlled, so the capacitors get loaded, and uh, then they unload into the cell till they are all kind of uh, balanced. Uh, we have uh, we feel that most of the cars that we have. Uh, uh, install these uh, balancers in mm. have possibly more balanced cells than when the car actually came out of the factory wow now uh, 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 while we say that they are balanced we don't say that the amperage is the same as uh, when they left the factory right. uh, let's say there were 200 ampere uh, batteries or 220 uh, ampere batteries that may not be the case today mm. there may be uh, you know 190 180 uh, uh, amperes that is due to degradation over the years uh, one is talking uh, you know anything between uh, 7 and 10 years that these cars have been on the road uh, without the balancer now to put the balancer doesn't uh, uh, increase the the amperage it definitely balances the amperage with the result the bad boy doesn't stop you in the middle of the road essentially so, the voltage uh, never goes below the threshold voltage right so it never what, goes. The voltage and amperage never goes below. Yeah. Exactly. For example, when I my, my car got stalled, I, re- I realized that the one cell had a voltage uh, that went below two point nine volts. So that is the threshold apparently. And if if any if any single cell ha- uh, voltage goes below, the car stalls. Right. So that's right. Uh, so now the active balancer will ensure that all the cells will re- remain above the threshold voltage. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see. That's a, I, I, that's brilliant. I mean, so so you this is a, this is a third party accessory. You fit in, uh, you fitted it uh, on the car, and also apparently it has an app that you can see the cell voltages dynamically. Is that true? Absolutely, it's a it's a Bluetooth app. Wow! And uh, it's very interesting. To- uh, have you ever gone below ten percent SOC with this new upgrade? We've now been down to four. Four percent, fantastic! And still yeah, the cell yeah, voltage yeah, is up yeah, cool. Yeah, we, we, we see that the E comes in, that's the economy mode, comes in at uh, between 21 and 19, right. sometimes 19, sometimes 20, 21. And uh, definitely the limp mode also comes in at about, uh, again, 11, uh, 10, 9. Uh, and we've taken it down uh, as far as 4. Uh, so, yeah, we are very, 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 very happy with that. So, great, guys. So if, there is if, no question mark. Yeah, so if any E2O owner is here, and if your car is getting older, uh, I think it's highly recommended to get this active balancer installed. Uh, definitely contact Zaril for this so he can uh, help you out. Uh, this is a great upgrade, Zaril. I mean, it's a boon for the community. So, uh, fantastic. Actually, we sent 
uh, 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 I don't know whether you know this uh, gentleman, Captain uh, Christopher Fernandez. Yes, Goa. Uh, he, uh, uh, yes, in Goa. Yeah. Uh, Christopher has has uh, we made a couple of videos and things like that, and sent him the whole wiring kit and the uh, active balancer, and he himself did it. He himself uh-huh. did it. Wow. So uh, it's not something that uh, is again rocket science. A little careful. Yeah. But we made videos and, and uh, you know, made a little booklet for him. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's done it. He's done it. He's pretty happy. Okay. So that so that's good. At least this will take care of the battery and the battery can keep going for some time. Uh, we don't have to worry about cells. So this is great. So now, now in the long term, right? So now you're getting cells from uh, cars that are crashed, accident cars and all that. But in the long term, uh, say for the next five years, if there'll be more E2 owners who who will ultimately need to change their pack. Now, what is the solution for that, Zaril? So, do you think getting cab cells is the only way out? Absolutely. I don't think one has got to, you know, think about uh, Thunder Sky batteries anymore mm. uh, because we're not going to get them. We, unless, you know, there's some big policy change uh, 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 starting up from the government itself uh, on EVs and batteries and things there. Mm. Uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, and uh, simply because uh, the IEMS is uh, built in such a way that, you know, it takes only these batteries. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a problem uh, trying to take uh, ordinary market cells and putting them in. Right. Uh, 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 so yeah, uh, I think we'll cross that hurdle in another year or two, uh, and uh, we'll be mm. back again on the road. I mean, we're not going to allow any car to to stay off the road. <laughs> That's great. Okay, good to know. So the battery uh, uh, battery can be prolongated by this accessory. Uh, you can replace cells if needed, or you can replace packs too. So that so that should keep the E two going for another ten years easily. Inshallah. <laughs> okay, great. So <laughs> that's about the E2O. Now, uh, now other components, right? Now we spoke about the onboard charger, DCCC converter, uh, motor, IEMS. Now these components, uh, is many industries still selling these components to you? Uh, no. Okay, now this no. is a problem, right? No, it's not a problem. Really? Uh, I see. See, we don't try to put my. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to cover up anything, hmm. but we're not going to try to put miney into a place where uh, they don't have them to start with, and we're not going to put miney's into into a spot with uh, miners. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, as I said, we are talking to vendors, and vendors will help us. Okay. So, uh, a vendor that can actually deliver the IEMS boards, uh, a vendor that can actually deliver the same onboard charger using the E2O is all that it's possible. You're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So that's great. Uh, so that's okay. So E2 owners, I think, uh, don't have to worry. Uh, so Zyra's team is here and uh, the Indian ec- component ecosystem for the E2O and the Reva is still there. Uh, so hats off to uh, Chetan Meni and his team who actually put in the effort to create this ecosystem. Zyra, that is amazing, right? If you see all the components, yes. the Indian components, yes. even, you know, telematics unit yes. is the Indian component. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, which which I'm not, uh, I, I have not confirmed myself. Uh, I have uh, actually two friends of mine that have bought the 400 and uh, mm-hmm. they tell me the telematics unit is exactly the same as what we had in, uh, or I have in my uh, Reva uh, Lithium Iron and uh, E2O's uh, right through. So uh, yes, the yeah. telematics is still being used, yeah. So if I yeah, I just uh, checked out the Mahindra XUV 400 recently, and there was that Reva telematics unit used uh, under the seat. Uh, so telematics unit is definitely being used. But then the problem is, since Mahindra never bothered uh, putting an effort to <laughs> uh, to you know uh, to improve this ecosystem. The ecosystem Absolutely, already made. Yeah. They never bothered yeah. to you know expand on this ecosystem or invest in this ecosystem. So the, what they ended up doing is they they purchased the motor, the PDU, the DCC converter, onboard charger, BMS, everything from abroad. What a shame! <laughs> what a shame! What a shame! You know, really, what a shame! I mean, 
you know, yeah, 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 I mean, I'm not going to say I'm old, but, uh, you know, I am who I am and I am my age, right? And to see, you know, uh, all my, my, not all, but a lot of my mates that have gone abroad, yeah. okay, and have done exceedingly well. And uh, we have as many uh, people who are brilliant, brilliant in our country, right. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we turn on Jugaad Jua. But it's not, it's, they're as innovative as anybody else, right. uh, not, given the, not given the chance, we don't have funding, right? But uh, why should we, why mm. should we be, be buying the components from abroad, mm. right? Uh, you know, uh, I, I would hate to say, uh, Kamlesha Zaralobo are only talking today. Mm. Sadly, we are only talking today. We are not doing anything. But it's not us that have to do it. It's the government legislation mm. and policies that need to be in place. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to go into charging network and things like that because that's not topical today. Yeah. But, you know, they, every, everybody, uh, their blood, sweat and tears is going into this. Private parties are putting, as you said, you know, startups. What are the startups? The startups are the guys who are, are literally putting their blood into into the EV industry. When it comes out or doesn't come out, it doesn't come out because they're not encouraged. It's not that they don't have the, the capacity to do it. It's not that they don't have the brains to do it. I've met some fantastic guys here, mm. you know. Uh, they, they've got everything on their laptop and they come and they say, you know, and uh, we get all excited. And then, you know, uh, nine months down the line, a year down the line, they've run out of steam and uh, things slow down. Uh, when one looks at uh, uh, actually the ether, I, I mean, if I can digress, yes. if one looks at, uh, uh, you know, Tarun Mehta, uh, you know, what he's done. He toiled on it for six years. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, but he has, he yeah. ha, he's, he's got a world-class project, uh, a world-class scooter today. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, there, there, there's absolutely no question about it. Now, I'm not going to be Ola because the Ola was uh, partly, maybe small uh, part of it was bought out of uh, Norway or whatever, uh, but, uh, you know, within uh, within a year, uh, I know that we have had a lot of uh, difference of opinion on, on the Ola, but uh, again, a beautiful scooter made in India, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is made in India. We have to accept that, yeah. Uh, and it, it's better than any of those Chinese scooters that come container loads. Uh, a little more expensive. But some of the features in, 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 those, uh, uh, in those bikes, uh, fantastic, yeah, fantastic. So the point is, yeah, if yeah. Uh, if Reva in 2010 and uh, the E2O in two, uh, uh, 2012 by the Reva team could create a ecosystem comp for the components, electronic components, and actually make an Indian product, and companies like Ather and Ola are actually investing in component ecosystem development. Why can't the car companies like Tata and Mahindra do it? Even Tata, right? They're importing all the component, electronic components from abroad and then assembling. A, that's what the car companies are doing, right? That's what Mahindra and Tata are doing. They're assembling, the procuring components, assembling a car. They're not actually developing the ecosystem. I'm saying this as a manufacturer. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, a person who has been in the manufacturing line and somebody who would like some sort of hand-holding so that mm. we can succeed. But there was no handholding uh, uh, when uh, Chetan Mani toiled on uh, pro making creating this Indian ecosystem. <laughs> that, 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 no, 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 no. So Mandra has no excuse. So... I feel right now. No, but no, no, no. Uh, uh, I I do agree with what you say, but I uh, why did Mani sell? Right. He was so uh, you know I I I, I, uh, I fail to get an adjective to actually mm. describe his mental state at that time to sell a baby. Still considers it his baby. Hmm. Just think about it. If if my, if my uh, many would have not got the investment from Mahindra and got investment from, a, from someone who wanted to develop an electric car ecosystem in India, we would have had 10-15 models right now when Chetamendi would have, uh, uh, you know, led, led the team and led the effort. Absolutely. No, no doubt about it. I don't think he needed the money. 
It was just that he was so fed up of the whole system itself. The right. system. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think the Mainis uh, lack money today. I mean, as a family, hmm. a very close family, Sandeep and Chetan. Hmm. Unfortunately, his father's passed away. But, uh, you know, uh, for whatever, 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 you know, they, they, and they're very well known. Yeah? Uh, they, they're one of the largest uh, 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 suppliers to Bosch for a lot of components. Yeah? I see. They, his father was with Michael and things. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they have a very, very, very strong uh, backing, uh, background and backing. So yeah. you're saying that all, all that effort uh, involved in creating this component ecosystem back in 2010, 2011, that took a toll. And I think uh, by... Well, he just wanted to, you know, uh, move on. That's what happened. I That's think. all. That's all. He got burnt out. I see. Interesting. I hope uh, Ether, well, Ether already has been purchased by Hero Motor Corp. I don't know how that will turn out. Uh, which... I hope not. I, I mean, it has happened. No, it has happened. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I mean, publicly, I don't want to say anything. But I, I hope that, uh, you know, they don't kill him. Right. I, that's, I, that's I, okay. Just like 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 Mahindra's killed, uh, uh, let's say uh, the mining vehicles. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, as as you will recall, the earlier it was yours and mine. Uh, I had uh, part by uh, by uh, by Reva. Exactly. On the, uh, below the the mirror. Yeah. Uh, the OBM. It, 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 the was very clear, and they were proud. And they had every right to be proud of their vehicle that they put on the road. Hmm. Interesting. So, this is a story, guys. I mean, who are who is listening? I mean, it's an incredible story. I think you should definitely read that book, Zaid Zaril, by uh, Saini. I think Mr. Mani's father. He wrote a very beautiful book yes. about the story, uh, about how yes. the team developed the car. Uh, I think that book is an awesome book. I think you guys should definitely get that book and read it. Uh, it's an amazing story of uh, Indian ingenuity, and uh, unfortunately, the car is the cars like Reva and the E2 are still ridiculed by the auto media. Uh, they don't look at uh, all the important, amazing work that's done by the team. Uh, it was all it, these cars were often ridiculed with bad reviews, and uh, yeah. You see, if yeah. if if uh, I mean, we me, we all know what the media has come to today. It's all paid. <laughs> Right, true, I, true. and I, this part I don't mind saying loudly. Yeah. Right, irrespective of which, which sphere, all the media is paid media, and uh, as we know today, uh, the uh, the oil lobby in the world is one of the one of the st strong, not one of the. It is the strongest. Yeah, it is the strongest. There's nobody can that can compete with the uh, with the oil uh, uh, oil lobby. There's there's no question about it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, people, uh, as you said earlier, they think more about money than they think about, you know, the environment itself. So, yeah, I, I just recently uh, checked out the XV400. Actually, we met the owner of uh, the XV400 and uh, he, we just saw the, saw the car, opened the bonnet and we saw uh, a component from Valio, a French company. Valio, how do you pronounce it? I don't know. Yeah. So now, yeah. Yes. So now that's a that's a component. Uh, as soon as I saw that component, I I understood that you know it's a three in one component. It has a DC DC converter, onboard charger, and the motor control all in one box. Apparently, even that component is used by the Tiago EV and the um, Tata Nexon EV Max too. So essentially, uh, Mahindra. Uh, is ultimately doing the same what it is doing assembly assembling cars so we just had a conversation about uh, the indian ecosystem that was there in 2010 and uh, we've lost the technology we've lost the processes we've lost the ecosystem the ecosystem is just there only because of your company uh, that's keeping it going and servicing e2o reva owners uh, and if mahindra would have bothered to invest in the ev ecosystem and taken ev seriously uh, they didn't. They wouldn't have to need to import these components, and they would have had a high voltage components made in India, right? By now, and uh, the XUV 400 could have been sold at a much cheaper cost. That's a tragedy. That that's what uh, I realized, you know, when I saw that component. So, I, it's not as though uh, 
you know, these two companies, the big, huge companies today, yeah. uh, both Mahindra's and uh, and uh, uh, Tata, yeah. And they've come a long way. I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, you know, for for people like me who, uh, you know, kind of weathered the storm over the last few years, uh, not few, over the last four decades, let's, let's put it that way, right? We don't see any reason why... Uh, uh, they needed to go out to procure things. Uh, I I don't say that everything you know you have to reinvent, right? and I, maybe that's that's what they're trying to do is try to reinvent rather than just pick up where somebody else has left off and then carry on from there, mm. right? Uh, that that that's exactly what actually both these industries has done. Uh, they have cashed actually on auxiliaries from. Uh, that have had been uh, set up by by Maruti. Let's let's be frank about it. You know, Maruti set up the ancillary industries uh, in the uh, late seventies, eighties, and and uh, a lot of people have taken uh, components from them with uh, with minor changes. And that is the way to do it, actually. You know, because all the machinery and everything is always paid for, set up, and and things there. Okay, now we're talking electricals. As we said earlier, you know, and today there are a lot of companies, even in Bangalore, who are making some fantastic motors, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, pancake motors and all the latest motors that are available abroad are being made actually uh, in, in the country itself. So I don't see any reason for anybody really importing a, 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 a motor. Okay. The DC DC converter, there's not much difference. Uh, maybe, you know, some amount of solid state has come into it as a uh, little more. Uh, integration of uh, of uh, data technology or and things like that, but then uh, Mindals for years has been also uh, uh, Tata's has been kind of low key, and uh, I'm uh, really proud to say you know that they've sold sixty thousand cars. I'm I'm saying sixty thousand. They were saying fifty thousand some time ago, and that's why I'm saying sixty thousand cars. Yeah, what's your uh, impression on Tata? Uh, the EV Vision, the way it started, the multiple coming companies coming together. Uh, to support electric cars, I think it's they have a. They, I feel they at least have a uh, holistic vision on EVs, uh, so that's pretty interesting. I felt absolutely, absolutely. As they said, they have not uh, set up a, a dedicated plant. They're still using their uh, existing lines itself and adding in the electrical components. I don't know how far that's true, but that's what I heard. Okay, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. who who said that? Uh, you know. I, I I know that way back in 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 uh, in the sixties, uh, Mercedes Benz uh, their whole line was a uh, was a tailor made uh, line. You could order your Mercedes to have various things in it, uh, your car to have various things in it. You should be programmed really in the sixties. So I, I don't see anything where you know so many robots and the rest of them are being used and. Uh, just in time uh, integration of components uh, thing. I, I, I really don't see any difficulty uh, in today's thing to uh, uh, for them to be making uh, uh, you know uh, EVs on on their regular life. Actually, frankly, I really expect Tata to come out with anything so soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but three years ago, they they come out and they got like sixty thousand cars on the road. Yeah, it's fantastic. You, yeah. uh, I mean, driving around in, in Bangalore today, I, I, I see any number of Tata vehicles, uh, you know, and everybody is very happy with them. The, the, the Of course, uh, as, as, uh, as all human beings know, somebody has some something to bitch about, and, you know, uh, there are a few negatives, but uh, I believe that the service is, is fantastic. Customer care, you talk to them, and, uh, and you know, the, somebody definitely calls you back, tries to sort it out. All the the new uh, updates are being uh, sent now. Uh, oh yeah. You know, uh, uh, so so the car, car is up to date. Yeah. Exactly. So if I mean I, I just want to say that the car in twenty twenty, which many Tata Tata Nexon EV owners have, is completely different from the car right now because the software has been being updated and being pushed to the cars, and the cars the that's the cars improving over time. Uh, when we got the E two O. I think we had one software update with many. After that, Mindra completely abandoned us, and we never had any updates. <laughs> so we went, we went backwards. Exactly, and we many cars were uh, disconnected. Uh, in twenty thirteen, the cars were connected, and 2018, 2019, 2020, cars were disconnected. It was like, crazy, the mismanagement of uh, the E two O's. 
actually when you talk of a connected car this is what i said you know mind was so much ahead of everybody yeah or chetan let's say, you know not let's take not uh, the rest of the family uh, let's talk about chetan mm-hmm. that car was connected i left my door open i get a message saying that you know your doors open <laughs> the car would be fully charged and uh, get a message saying oh your car is fully charged you can disconnect you know, things like that exactly uh, and and you know like 10 years ago, nine years ago, eight years ago, when we got that, wow, that's very <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it gave a good feeling. Yeah. You know, today so you see some uh, some cars uh, connected in this day. Hey, what the hell? Yeah, we did it 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, our cars were, were connected 10 years ago. We didn't have a sticker at the back uh, saying, uh you know uh, connected 10 years ago yeah, yeah. it's fantastic yeah. apart from connected i mean if you see the eto had this efficiency graphs uh, gamification Absolutely. you can compare with your friends uh, all the way ahead of the time i think chetan many was a true visionary and the indian electric car Absolutely. industry completely misses him right now uh, we don't have that person leading the industry the car industry right now that's the problem uh, so yeah I so great yeah so now what about tata cards are you you have around uh, a uh, few etos and few revas lying around are you picking up a tata electric car anytime soon no sir <laughs> no sir right i'm not going to pick up anything just now right you i don't you're... think in, 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 in this lifetime of mine i'm not going to pick up any of these cars so <laughs> so reva and enjoy my friends cars mm-hmm. i shall enjoy my uh, they think as you know there was a there was an african guy who said i have to be buried with my mercedes Or, I don't know, Puerto Rican or some, something like that. Yeah, you can bury me on, uh, or cremate me with my bloody Reva. Yeah. Reva. <laughs> yeah, bloody hell, yeah. yeah. It's, I, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love the bloody Reva. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's so, so, so my need, yeah. So my need. I mean, and it's so the, the need of so many people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going for a mind. It's not, Uh, it's not a question of afford. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need these cars. I don't think that car is going to give me any more joy. Uh, I'm not doing any long runs. Unfortunately, for my long run, I I have an IC car. Uh, I I'm a little ashamed to be saying it publicly, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 okay. Yeah, I'm not doing so many long runs anymore. So once a year, into, maybe yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you know, so, so for for that, I'm not going to buy one of these. Exactly. So. Yeah, so there's a market for a city car. You're saying that can go up to hundred, hundred, hundred fifty kilometers. If these ice, if these big OEMs even uh, care, they should look into something like this, right? Absolutely, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, they, 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 they definitely, uh, you know, there are there's money in in the big vehicles, but there is more money to be made per unit. I mean, per unit. because of the numbers that you can sell of small yeah right uh, they, they, I, i think uh, i mean if the chinese are doing it we can do it yeah we, we just right. need some hand holding for us to, to 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 get us on the road yeah right so there are some arguments like you know uh, uh, extra safety requirements more airbags all that is mandatory right now so the costs are going up Uh, so you do you think it's not possible to make a uh car under 5 lakhs electric car 5 lakhs and any more that can go up to 100 kilometers with all these safety requirements uh See, you let's, think let's not hide be no, no let's not hide behind that please right. let's not hide hmm. see there are there are different uh, categories for uh, different vehicles like you cannot put the, the you know something in a car that is uh, you know a high performance car or suv you can't put the same standards on a, on a More car. on a quarter cycle on a quarter cycle hmm. you know that's that's the that's the nomenclature for the cars that you and me are talking about the hmm. world over they call quarter cycles so let's let's kind of take the standards of quarter cycle not go into the bs6 because hmm. that's all bullshit yeah. we don't need i mean frankly speaking do you think that we need a, at a, Maybe thirty kilometers, forty kilometers speed in very Bangalore. I'm talking Bangalore, right? <laughs> uh, or, or or any other city for that matter. Uh, yeah, uh, no, nobody uh, uh, in a in a quarter cycle or in a Reva. Nobody is trying to do uh, uh, Delhi Agra or Delhi Mathura or something like that. 
or uh, you know the, uh, yeah okay well you do we did it uh, and you've done it uh, you know mumbai uh, mumbai pune right but you know it's, it's, uh, for that the infrastructure also has come up now the charging stations and all are coming up all private all private uh, you know uh, i don't think uh, you know it's fair for the for the automobile companies to be hiding behind somebody else's skirt yeah. Uh, you know, you just 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 stand and 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 take it. Yeah, the, the, after all, the, today a car is not a luxury. Gone are the days when the car was a luxury. Mm-hmm. Today the cars are, you know, everybody off the road is buying a car, good or bad. So uh, why should it be a nice car? Let it be an electric car. Yeah. Interesting. So I mean, for example, right. Tata has abandoned the Nano anymore because they see that you know Nano does not. fit the new requirements safety requirements so they abandoned it because nano would have been an ideal electric car right for city <laughs> so that i heard i heard something else oh, really was the nano actually abandoned for that or was it because the indian population thought it was too cheap a car ah uh, okay could be yeah abi abi got that complex interesting yeah so hard to say i mean if you but if you look at small towns people will uh, there's a huge scope in small towns to sell Absolutely, these yeah. kind of cars 100 km range 150 km range uh, which these oems are not thinking about so yeah sad state of the car industry in india i mean ultimately the chinese will come see to more byd is already here zaril they're going to get uh, yes. uh, small cars soon beautiful yeah <laughs> and yeah. then these car companies will then get serious mg is already launching the comet which is a small car apparently right. soon That's right. Uh, not That's sure right. the pricing. We're waiting how... for that. Yeah. We're waiting for that. We're waiting for that. There's no doubt about it. Just I, I tell you, one of the 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 smartest moves that Tata's made was when they bought Land Rover and Jaguar. Right. That changed the face of their whole production facilities in in in, uh, in India. True. True. And that was the way to go. Yeah. Mm. That was the way. Bringing up a bloody Korean company, Sangong, and and rubbish like that, which are bloody wonder. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, already rubbish, all rubbish. Yeah, they haven't got the 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 sites uh, focused at all. But I feel uh, the uh, chi- the Chinese car companies and then Indian startups and then you have a big player like Ola who's also launching cars. I think the Indian big OEMs will soon start towing the line, and we will definitely see options for the working class courts. I'm sorry, <laughs> I think it'll happen. It's just a matter of time. I, 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 uh, yeah, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. I, 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 I mean, while I, I did say earlier, uh, I didn't have much uh, uh, faith in in uh, Bhavesh Agarwal yes. uh, and Ola. I, I'm, I'm not counting on him to to actually break the barriers, you know. Yeah, but he and says that he done. wants to launch an affordable car, and he, he, when we met yes. him in Bombay, he was Chalo, like, he, it has to be affordable. I can't launch a Tesla. He was, you know, very adamant on that vision. So let's see. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. We wish him well. Yeah, so that's the hope. I mean, if the the point is, we need to get our big OEMs to you know start thinking for the common man. So that's the main issue here. But uh, if uh, startups and Chinese and can help, why not? Yeah. Yeah, why not? And why of not? course, Zaril, and if you if you can get funding for your electric car project, nothing like it. And if any rich people listening here, if you want to work with Zaril, you should definitely contact Zaril. Uh, definitely. <laughs> so. <I'm hoping. laughs> <laughs> so great so fantastic talking to you zaril uh, uh, how can people reach you um, if they want to get in touch for reva conversions e2o service investment and lot of other things fortunately my father gave me a very unique name so <laughs> if you google if you google zaril <laughs> you'll find your details uh, will be in the description uh, of this video or podcast so definitely get in touch with zaril And uh, so fantastic, Zaril. So look forward to meeting you when I'm in Bangalore next time, or when you're in Pune here. So we will definitely yes. meet up and uh, look forward to visiting your factory and uh, see all the cool stuff you're always doing. Always welcome. Yeah, always welcome. Thank you very much for Thank having you so me, much, and uh, I appreciate it.